Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris Man, and as always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. And today I'm going to do a video that's entitled The God Spill. Spill. And uh, <clears throat> I think it's important, you know, to pass on information to younger folks because basically this is what this channel is about. It's about educating young folks musically, you know, intellectually, you know, helping them prepare for things that they're going to deal with, you know, because there's some things that all of us are going to deal with. There are no exceptions. So you want to try to help prepare people or young folks for this, because before I go into this bill, I'm just going to say this because I've said it before. Uh, you know, the violence in this country, especially in Chicago, uh, it's real simple. We got a lot of young folks that are having kids that are still kids at home and they can't teach these kids anything because they don't know anything yet you know and then their fathers are gone so you know i really feel sorry for these kids you know uh it's a recipe for disaster you know uh when i was growing up and you know i know things change unfortunately some things change for the worse technology always changes usually for the better but uh you know there nothing can replace you growing up in the household full of love. Your mother's there. Your father's there. They love each other. They love you. They they they're rearing they're rearing you, because a mother cannot bring a father's perspective to the table, and a, and a father cannot bring a mother's perspective to the table. But you got some women, and not bashing the women. I could do this all by myself. If you could, you could have had him all by yourself. You couldn't do that. So what makes you think you can do this by yourself? You know, it's being real selfish that. We're not thinking about our children first and putting together, putting aside our issues with each other. I'm going to get you, mother, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, that's not the topic here. The topic here is this. I don't think there's nothing worse to me, and we all have our own pet peeves, than some motherfucker that wants to give you the God spill whose life is fucked up. It's like you're not qualified to get that, that speech, my friend. You know, and I'm going to say this because I think it's important. It's not really, it's not ranting. It's actually just educating young folks and just how people, you know, their mindset, you know. And I know no, no, no two people are the same. But uh, I have a habit. Well, I won't say I have a habit, but it's just the law of nature. Or odds, uh, uh, when I come into the Chicagoland area, because I live in New York. And uh, soon I'm going to go there and I'm not coming back here. But anyway, uh, I run into people that I know. And these are not the people that I like, you know, because uh, I'm going to talk about this specific person. And it's important that I share this and this, this story because it's interesting. And it's a learning experience. I grew up in an, on a block that the majority of people was cool. You know, we got along. We're like brothers. Then there were a few people on the block. that were assholes. And I stayed clear of them. I didn't part. I didn't partake of that clique. Actually, my clique was like three blocks down the street. I hung out with some guys that was like three blocks away from me in a different neighborhood because the majority of the guys in my block in my neighborhood were one of these. They were uh, troublemakers. They were instigators. Uh, it, they were they had a little clique thing, and I didn't want to be a part of that nonsense. I'm like, y'all a bunch of stupid idiots. Why wouldn't I roll with you? So, you know, I kind of kept my distance, and I think they kind of resented that because even as a kid, I had the foresight. Stay away from toxic people. I'm like 13, 14 years old, and I'm aware of this. And I'm like, uh, ain't nothing good coming out of hanging out with these guys. And this particular guy, you know, I wrote him off a long time ago because of this. Uh, there was another guy that lived on the block. Well, actually, he lived two blocks away. He was kind of one of those I want to follow, roll with, you know, with the popular dudes. And I do whatever it takes to get you approval. So uh, they went to a party with him. And, you know, basement parties back in the day, you know, real crowded, dark. So uh, this girl that lived actually two blocks away. Actually, block away. She stepped on the guy's toe. Shoot. Not a big deal. But the other guy that lived on my block instigated. Don't let that bitch you step on your shoe and disrespect you. And uh, they forced him to have an altercation with her. And they had words. And I was like, a shoe step on. Come on. It's, it's 20, 50, 60 people up in this little basement. What you expect? So uh, they argued. People pushed him to the side. And that should have been it. It, that, it even shouldn't have had it got to that point. So then after... You know, the party is over the next day, everything forgotten about, you know, and then the guy on my block instigated again. Don't let that be disrespect. You go over there and show your represent. So they forced this poor individual to walk a block down the street to her house to confront her. So she's opened the door and she's terrified because she's like, these dads out here, you know, arguing at me. You know, I'm not another dude. So why? Are they? So, she, you know, her father had a service revolver. So she went back in the house. 
protecting her stuff because she was in her house within every right. And she came outside, opened the door and shot, shot him in the head. He died. You know, he lost his life over that bullshit that the, that the guy on my block instigated. So I'm like, I can never forgive you for that because you still walking around here drunk. But yet the guy that, you know, had nothing to do with nothing was forced into an altercation. He should have been forced into. He's no longer here. His life ended at age 16. You know, so I run into this guy. You know, I already got that brewing inside me because I'm like, I don't ever want to see you again. And uh, we were talking because I'm being pleasant with him. And uh, it's interesting. He's drunk, but even still, you are who you are regardless of you drunk or not. Admits to me, me of all people, you know, uh, I still, I got a thing for your sister. Huh? And, uh, you know, I'm trying to get at her. He's a married man with children. You know, I'm like, come on, man, grow up. You know, and uh, if he's trying to get at my sister, most likely he's already been uh, uh, unfaithful to his wife anyway. You know, so uh, he's telling me this. And I'm like, I'm the last person you should be telling this to. You know, you, I'm the last person. But he's so stupid, he can't realize that. So then uh, we were talking. And I said, you know what, man? I know within 10 years I'm not going to be here. Only God knows that. I'm like, I'm not giving you a time and day, but I know that. I, I'm being realistic. And that's one thing that I loved about Dave, that we had these conversations. It was about being realistic, not full of bullshit and, and assuming and hoping and praying. It, it, this is the deal. You know, and, and I admire some white folks for that because they handle the business. You know, because we as black folks, we don't want to talk about death. I don't want to talk about death, but it's a realization that we all leaving here. So we better prepare, we better prepare for that. I got my will made out. I got, you know, uh, who's going to get what. You know, because we have a tendency to don't do none of that, ignore it, and then die. Then our family members, time and time again, fight over our shit when we die. I've seen that so many times, it ain't even funny. And it's like, if we just would have simply, you know, put this together to say, when I die, he can have these guitars, he can have that bass, whatever, and, and call it a day and still of all. Uh, there is no will or no type of documentation to say who gets what. So now everybody rushes in and try to start grabbing shit, you know, and uh, we got to stop that. Because uh, when I talked to Dave and he told me that he was passing away or he was dying. And, uh, you know, my first thoughts is I hope that you're wrong and I hope that you're here longer with us. But I respected the fact that this man knows his situation and body. And he was just being honest, you know, and I'm like, OK, I, I understand. I accept it. I'm sad. But, you know, you better than you than anybody else. You know, when I made that statement to, uh, you know, my friend about. By the time 10 years come out, I'm not going to be here. And I'm like, uh, I've accepted that. You know, uh, I know me better than anybody. You know, and uh, it's very rare that when I m make these types of statements that I'm wrong. And I wish that I was. You know, my mother gave me some advice and I'm not going to go into what she said. I should have listened to her because I was in agreement with her. But I went against what I felt. And as a result of that, it changed and altered my life, you know. And it'll never be the same as a result of me making a decision that we both know I shouldn't have not made, you know. But uh, I just thought I would do this video because uh, it's really important to pass on knowledge to the younger people, you know, because the older people in my life during my era passed it on to me. And I would not be the person that I am now if it wasn't for other people in the past that were telling me about things that I'm going to have to deal with. And this is how you start to prepare for that. Because, again, our young misguided black men, they're misguided. They don't have a father in the home. They are, you know, the next best thing to a father or family in these streets is gangs. You know, we look out for you, dude. You know, we got your back. Somebody hurt you, we coming for them. You know, and uh, they don't have that at home. And as a result of that, it's the mess that we have. This all this nonsense about just take the guns off the street. You know, that's not the solution. Let's fix the problem that's causing people to pick the guns up. You know, but it's like some people that are in power, they don't have a clue. I mean, it's just real simple. Let's try to straighten up these family households. All that stuff will balance itself out. It's still of uh, we're giving them more jail time if we catch them. You know, it's like that's not the solution. That's just punishing some, some people or young guys that... We're born into an effed up situation and uh, they don't know how to get out of it, you know, and, it, and, and, and it's up to us older people to help them get out of it. But instead, we're going to get in them longer jail sentences time, uh, toughen up on the gun law thing. You know, that's not the solution. And, and one day, hopefully these people that are 
running things or controlling things will wake up, you know. But the majority of the people that are running things grew up in a society and an environment and a social status that they never had to deal with that, never seen it firsthand. So how can you control or, or take care of something you know nothing about, you know? <sighs> Just common sense. But until next time, take care. Thanks for watching. I'm here to educate and inform and enlighten. Take care.